see. It's hard, kind of hard for me to see, but we'll just chat for a minute while we're getting everybody in class. Um, oh, there they go. <laughs> okay, it might, so I, can I, Okay, I'm not able to hear. Let's, did you want me to go ahead or? Hello, everybody. Oh, we're just we letting go. everyone kind of pop in. So um, just give us just a minute or so. And just so you guys know that we will have everybody on mute um, just to kind of help keep the noise, kind of the background noise quiet. Um, if you don't have your chat open, you can go ahead and open that up and tell us where you're joining us from. So far, we've got Arkansas, North Carolina. Hello, Bonnie from Houston. Looks like we have pretty good from Houston. So, hi, I'm Rochelle from Michaels. I'm so glad that you guys are all joining us um, amongst these crazy times. Um, but you know, our goal here is to keep everybody making and creating, and we're really excited to be um, partnering with We Are Memory Keepers. And we have Allie Dostel here with us, who's going to be taking you guys through a fun project. You know, she is our paper expert. So with that, I'll go ahead and kick it off. Um, and just remind you, if you guys have questions throughout, we're gonna do our best to um, answer those live through the chat. So just make sure that you are um, asking through everyone and not specific to the host. So with that, I'll go ahead and kick it over to you, Allie. Great. Hi guys, thanks so much for joining me this Monday morning. Um, or I guess midday for some of you and afternoon for some of you. Um, I am Allie Dossel and I work with We Are Memory Keepers. I've been with them for about 10 years. I started as a, a crafter creating sample projects for their advertising and their catalogs and their marketing. Um, then I took over their blog and then I took over their design team and um, now I've become a, a teacher. I travel and teach for them um, and I do demonstrations at trade shows and I do television spots for them and videos for them since I've taken over their YouTube channel. So it's been really fun. I absolutely love crafting. I've been scrapbooking and paper crafting for, for over 20 years. It's a passion of mine and I'm so grateful that I can uh, do this as a job and share my love for crafting and paper craft um, with lots of other people. And my, one of my favorite parts is meeting you guys when I get to travel. Um, and that's not possible right now, but I'm really grateful that we have this technology so we can meet virtually. And I'm really happy you're here. Um, so let me just explain a little bit about the project we're going to make. We can get a quick overhead shot of this um, project. This is a journal. And it is so important, right, right now especially, I believe, to record, document your experiences, your feelings, um, what life is like during this historic time. Um, and so um, we're going to make a memory book. This is a kind of a memory journal. Um, so here's the cover and flip this open and, and we're going to bind together some just some plain papers. Um, and then we're also going to bind together some of the pretty papers from this collection. Now I'm using this paper collection um, from Joanne. It's a Recollections paper pad, um, and the uh, description is uh, sorry. The the um, product is in the description for the class. Um, but you can use whatever you want. You can use any paper collection. Michaels has a great selection of um, different paper collections. So if this doesn't speak to you, this is my personal style. If you'd rather use uh, something different you're welcome to just whatever works for you i really believe that memory keeping needs to be a personal thing um, so this this album this journal has a lot of spots that you can add um, journaling that you can add photos here's an envelope that i've bound right into the album um, so you can put place a photo in here you can place journaling in here there's a lot of different spots for um, whatever you want to do to to document this experience 
Um, we're going to do some die cutting. There's a little bit of stamping in here. And what I love about our tools, the We Are Member Keepers tools, is they really allow you to stretch your paper stash. So you're die cutting um, and you're using little scraps of paper. Um, you know, you're stamping and you're personalizing, um, you know, what you want to say in your album. So we're, we're actually, what we're going to do in this class is we're going to um, create this album, bind it together, and we're going to decorate the cover. Um, and then I'm just going to show you, you know, go through some of the ways that I've embellished this and allow you to get creative and embellish your journal however you want. Um, so um, we're going to get started. And um, what we're going to do first is create the cover. Then we're going to go through the pages and, and bind the pages. Um, and I'm going to show you how to make this. Now, again, if this does not speak to you, this particular style, I'm a sucker for florals. Um, if this doesn't feel like the right vibe for you, again, go ahead and switch this paper collection out for whatever works for you, whatever fits with your personal style, with how you want your memories from this experience to be um, documented. All right, so let's get started. We're going to go ahead and make the cover. And so let me show you, this is the paper pad that I used. Um, and I love this because it ha it's double-sided. That's part of why I picked it, but it's also my personal style. So you have double-sided papers and that's great for, for paper crafting because you've got a pretty surprise on both sides. Um, and so I recommend using a double-sided paper pad. It's got some pretty metallic accents on some of these pages. This is really heavy, sturdy cardstock. It's 60, probably 60 to 80 pounds. So that's gonna um, help your journal to last and be a little bit more sturdy. So let me show you the, the page that we uh, that I used for the cover is this one that has polka dots on one side, yellow polka dots, and it has this beautiful floral on the other side. So that's the one we're going to do. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut this apart and we're going to leave it 12 inches wide and we're going to just trim it down to eight inches. So if you have a paper trimmer, you can use that. If you have scissors, you can just use a ruler and like measure out. So this is eight inches tall um, and we're just going to slice off the top and I would hang on to these when you cut them apart because you can use this for the die cutting and for embellishing. So be sure to hang on to that scrap. So now we've got um, the cover here. We're going to um, score that right down the middle. Now let's just talk about paper scoring for a minute. Um, and you know, it doesn't matter really what score tool you use. Um, the point is, is when you're using thick cardstock like this, that's, you know, 60 to 80 pounds, it folds much more beautifully if you score it before you fold it. So I'm going to just line this up and score it right in half. And scoring just allows you to, to more easily fold that paper in half. Some trimmers have a scoring feature. You can also buy a separate scoring tool um, and have a separate trimmer. And see, that just makes a beautiful crease. The paper doesn't tear um, and it just looks ni nice and neat. So that's what we're gonna do for our cover. We're actually gonna go this way. So that's our cover that we're gonna have this on the outside so we can decorate it. This allows us to decorate it beautifully and not have too, many, too much um, going on on the front. Um, and there's our inside cover. That's the pretty florals on the inside. Hey, All right, so we have a couple questions rolling in. Yeah. Um, we are, some people are wondering, do you have to use double-sided paper? Okay. I, you don't have to, you can use, um, paper that just has a blank white on the other side. That works fine. I prefer to use double-sided because you get the two patterns. So, but if you, if you want to use this, you know, single-sided, that is totally fine. Again, this is your journal. This, these are your memories. So you're welcome to do that. Another idea is you can take two sheets of paper that are single-sided and you can um, use double-sided tape and stick them together. I um, mean, that way you have a pattern on both sides. So it's really, it's really up to you. Okay, perfect. Thank you. And then did you mention the name of the paper pad? I did not. It is Fantasy Floral is the paper pad. And it has a matching set of washi tape that we're going to use um, in the class as well, which is great because washi tape is one of my favorite embellishments to use. Um, it's easy. It's um, sticky. You know, you don't have to put adhesive on it. And it matches back to the beautiful paper pad, all the pretty florals. So um, that's a great set to use. But if you want to use a different set, 
double-sided or single-sided, fine. That's totally fine. Totally up to you. I, I would recommend though going with a, you know, a good, thick, sturdy paper that's 60 to 80 pounds um, so that your, your journal kind of holds up so it's not too flimsy. All right. Okay, so we've got our cover and um, now we're gonna decorate it. So what we're gonna do is there is a sheet in the paper pad. Let me see if I can, I think I've already cut it apart so I can show you part of it. Um, and also what I love about this particular paper pad is you have cut apart pages. Um, so you have page titles, you have um, embellishments that you can cut apart, you have labels, you have journaling spots. So I cut apart this 12 by 12 sheet um, and uh, the part that we cut out for the cover is this part. It's a beautiful little circle floral frame. That's where we're gonna put the title of our, our journal. Um, and then again, hang on to these. We'll use these two, and then we'll also use this piece because we're gonna use the opposite side. So hang on to those. So um, the first thing we're gonna do for the, the cover, now when you're making a, a personal journal that's about a specific activity or a specific experience or, or um, you know thing in your life, you want to, and you want to make it custom. So I, I, I doubt I'm going to find any stickers out there right now that say COVID-19 or, you know, world pandemic or whatever. So the, we have provided some tools with We Are Memory Keepers so that you could personalize and customize your, your projects. So we're, what we're going to do is use what's called the foil quill freestyle pen. Um, and these are available. Um, there's a small tip, a medium tip, and a bold tip. We're going to use the medium tip. Um, and these are amazing because you can use them anywhere, anytime. They plug into a USB power source. This is just my um, phone charging power bank. Um, so you can plug it into that or a wall adapter or you know, a, a device like a laptop or a pad. Um, and it heats up for maybe five to 10 minutes. Um, and then it comes with a roll of foil that's six inches by, I believe, eight feet. So you get tons of foil to work with. Um, and what we're gonna do is now, if you're a hand letterer, if you're a calligrapher, you're gonna have a blast with this. You can write um, you know, anything you want anywhere. You can write it on leather, paper, um, plastic, uh, you know, all kinds of things. We've done it on you know, flower pots and you can totally personalize gifts. It's just a really amazing tool. Um, I am not a hand letterer or a calligrapher. So here's a cool way to use this and make it look beautiful without having those hand lettering skills. I just printed this on my printer. Um, and again, if you prefer to use a different kind of font, just use whatever your favorite font is, print out your words, um, and then that's gonna go right on top of the foil, which goes right on top of the project you want the foil to transfer to. So I've already gone ahead and done most of this because it takes a little while to cover all that ground. Um, but I'm just gonna go ahead and finish the last number here. We're gonna do the 19. And I'm just, I'm using pretty much about the same pressure I would as if I were writing by hand maybe just a little bit more, like kind of think of yourself coloring, like with a marker or crayon. And we're just gonna fill in this uh, number that we've already printed. And if you, you know, you can use the wide tip for this. It does cover a little more ground. Um, so that's a good option as well. And the fine tip is a really good one for details if you're doing a really pretty intricate detailed design. So you can print any design, you can print any image and then foil it. You can also use your stamps. If you like to stamp, you can stamp with permanent ink directly onto the foil and then um, color or you know draw right on top of that and it'll transfer the foil directly onto your material. So this is a great tool to have, it's a lot of fun adding gold foil accents to almost any project. It's a great option. All right, so let's see what we've done here. So that's what it ends up looking like. Um, and let me show you the cover. So here's what it what ended up looking like. So we're gonna kind of do that in the top half of this pretty um, circle frame. And then we're going to add, let me get this out of the way for a second. Then we're going to add the word pandemic. And so what I've done is I've taken this, uh, one of the papers, it's a peach colored paper. It's got this on one side and this on the other. And I've cut a five and a half inch long strip that's three quarters of an inch wide. And we're going to use another tool that allows you to totally personalize or customize 
whatever you want to say on your projects and it's called the word punch board and so this comes with this um, punch and it comes with these little inserts that have every letter of the alphabet and you just line them up in here to say whatever you want to say and if you need to repeat a letter you would just um, punch with it and then move the letter over and take everything else out so you, you can do repeat letters just so you know so I'm going to slide this little strip in underneath those inserts there get it all the way back let's see I think make sure they're lined up properly there we go and there's a little guide here that you just line that up with so it's easy there's no guessing and you just get that back all the way to the back till it stops. And then just press down on this. And that's gonna punch out those letters. And there you've got the word pandemic. Again, you're not gonna find a sticker right now. You're not gonna find you know, a, a, a nice already made page title with this word. So you get the chance to make it your own. And then all I did was just, I trimmed a little off here. And then I just did what I like to call a dovetail. Um, maybe it's kind of a banner cut um, that just kind of makes a little bit of a decorative finishing touch on this on each side and then i used foam adhesive um let me remove this and oh by the way your freestyle pen the gold foiling pen comes with what's called placement tape which is basically washi tape so that you can tape down your foil and keep it in place so that's convenient it comes with everything you need and so what i did is i used some foam stickers um, and to place this on um, and that bit, that way they fit easily in foam adhesive is a great way to add some dimension to your projects without too much bulk because it can also kind of squish down you know if you need to fit it into a shelf or something when you're storing it it'll still you know because it's foam it still has a little bit of give and so we're we just stuck that on just so it has a little bit of race to it and the thing that i like to do is um using a contrasting paper in the front and then the back so you see how the the light paper and then the punch letters and that darker color underneath really shows through so you can read that word more easily all right so once we've done that we're ready to put on some custom embellishments and the way we're going to do that is with the um, floral stamp die and emboss kit now this let's see if i can find okay here we go got my little cart here with all my goodies on it so this kit as a great embellishment making kit again this is great for um, expanding your paper stash for stretching that stash um, it includes an embossing folder a set of stamps and then it includes two sets here um, of layered stamps that match up to a die cutting and embossing folder so you would stamp these at se separate colors and they go they fit right on top of each other and then this little um, window here allows you to place in little stamps you can change out the words love grows here hope grows here joy grows here faith grows here and once you've stamped all of that in different colors so you have a multicolor image you would cut it out with this awesome cutting and embossing folder with your just a tabletop die cutting machine um, and then the other set is also really cute um, these match up let's see i think i've got it flipped over nope i was right <laughs> there it goes and then you would just add these words into there celebrate you did it thank you and then you die cut that out and it makes a tag um just you know fully ready to go tag super cute so um and then there's a set of separate dies here we go so if you want to add additional um embellishments die cut embellishments to your project these match all of the images and the stamps perfectly so that's what we're going to work with right now is we're going to die cut some um, flowers and some um, little accents to add to our project so i'm going to take this cut apart sheet that we used for the title and just cut this apart because this is going to actually be part of the album and 
I just want to get this piece off so that I can use the back of that to die cut. All right. So that's what we're going to cut the flowers in. And so I'm just going to add my paper. And then I'm going to, I would just want to cut, I like to do a whole bunch at one time because then I can just have a bunch of these pretty embellishments ready to go and use them throughout my album. So I'm just going to cut a bunch at one time. Let's move these up so I can save my paper. And I'm just using a tabletop um, die cutting and embossing tool. Um, there are a lot of really awesome ones on the Michaels website that you can pick from or use whatever you have on hand. And this is just going to cut out those shapes for me. And again, they match back to the stamp. And they're custom made. I've used my paper scraps and I've got these pretty flowers now. If I can get off of the, there we go, that I can add to my album. Um, and again, I, I probably, what I usually do is just take a bunch of different papers from the paper pad and just keep cutting tons of little flowers so that I have a lot of options to work with when I go to create. So let me show you how to put that together on the cover. All right, so I did actually use a kind of a, an olive green cardstock to cut out some of the leaves. And so here's my first flower that I'm going to do down here at the bottom. And what I like to do is I like to just gently take my fingers, hoping you can see this, and just kind of roll the outside edges of that flower to give it a little bit more dimension. Paper is very pliable. And so you can roll it and bend it and shape it just to give it a little more dimension. And then again, I use the um, foam adhesive to just pop that up on the cover. And that's just going to kind of go down here right in the middle. And then I'm going to layer another um, piece, part, another smaller flower that I cut from that peach paper that I used earlier for the title and stick that right in the middle there. And then um, enamel dots are another fantastic way to decorate with paper crafts and they make perfect flower centers. Um, and so we're just gonna create the center of that there. Add a little adhesive to this leaf that we die cut earlier. And that's just gonna go right here. And again, this is all part of the set and it all matches back. And so that's done. And then I just added a few at the top. Let's see, a couple of flowers at the top. And again, you know, I would just kind of bend these up just a little bit to get a little dimension. And if you have a, a like a round, you know, a pen or pencil, you can also use that to bend up your um, flowers. And then I'm just going to put a little bit of adhesive on the back of these. And these kind of go in a little cluster at the top to balance out that pretty flower down at the bottom. <laughs> and I'm going to be honest, um, you know, we're all having a completely different experience um, right now. For some, it's very different than it is for others. Um, and so if, if florals does not feel like it would work for you to document this experience, that is totally fine. So, you know, again, pick a different um, paper collection that more reflects your personal experience, your personal style. Um, this is just what I like. So. And that goes there. And then we would just take another um, enamel dot and stick that in the center of this small flower. Whoops, if I can get it in the center right there. Okay, so that's our cover. Um, and then let's see, I did add, so here's another cut, up, cut apart sheet that's in the paper collection. And these are fantastic. So you can cut all these apart and use these as um, labels, as accents, you know, as journaling spots, what, whatever you want to do. Um, I use this cute label down here and I cut it out with my scissors, just kind of, I call it fussy cutting, just right around that pretty frame. And then I cut it in half. And let me show you what I did with it. I used it to add the date right here at the top. And I used the freestyle pen, the Floral Quill freestyle pen to add it in gold foil. So it's just up there at the top. So you can do that if you'd like um, to get the date down there um, as well. All right, so that's what 
that looks like. Now we're going to put that actually on the cover. And first I'm gonna add a strip of this olive cardstock um, at the top and the bottom. And if you're using textured cardstock, just be aware that the texture needs to show. So this is the back. So I'm gonna make sure that the texture is um, facing up so you can see that pretty texture. And then stick this one on. And then I'm gonna grab my scissors, just trim off the excess on the ends there. All right, and then I'm gonna add some double-sided tape to the back of this. And put that right on my cover. And I'm going to kind of place it down here a little bit towards the top. So I've got about two rows of those polka dots um, peeking out. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because I'm gonna add a strip of washi tape down here at the bottom. Now I was kind of hurrying to get this done and so my cardstock is crooked, but yours will not be because you're a really careful and um, thoughtful paper crafter, of course. So we're gonna use this pretty washi tape and it says love, dreams, courage, happiness. Um, and I wanted to use that because ma mainly because of the love and the courage because I feel like this is a time in our family that we're really um, having to have some courage and that we're also really having to reach out and love to you know, those in our neighborhood, in our area here in our community that are in need. A lot of people are um, needing some financial help right now. And so as a family, that's one of our goals is to reach out and help our neighbors. So I'm gonna trim that off. And the beautiful thing about washi tape, again, sticky, sticks right on. It's not bulky, so it's you know, nice and flat and it adds a really beautiful decorative element. So that is our cover. Now let's work on the inside pages. So let me show you the pages that we've, I selected for my journal. Um, and it, you can totally change that up if you wanna use different pages. Um, so the first thing I did is I took 11 sheets of 20 pound copy paper. This is just from my printer. Um, and I trimmed it down, so I left it at 11 inches long, and then I trimmed it to uh, just under eight inches wide. And the reason I need to trim it, so it was like seven and seven eighths is how wide it is. And the reason I needed to do that is because when I bind this in my cover, I want my cover to be just slightly uh, taller than my paper, so that my paper isn't sticking out. Okay, and so that's 11 sheets. You can do more or less, whatever floats your boat. Um, and you may have more to say than I do or have more photos or less. So these are the papers that, the pattern papers that I use um, for my journal. So you can see what they look like. Um, this is the peach one that I had already trimmed off for the title. So again, we're using the scraps and we're using, you know, the main part for the page. Um, so these are also, um, so I left them at 12 inches, which is the same as the cover but they're just slightly shorter, seven and seven eighths tall rather than eight so that they fit inside that cover. And then what I did is I scored right down the middle of all of these pages. So there's a nice pretty score line there so that when we go to fold them, they'll fold nicely. All right, so then the next step is to put these pages, oh no, the next step is to make envelopes, ha ha. So <laughs> let's not forget our envelopes. So we've got a couple of envelopes in here to hold photos, to hold journaling, to hold, you know, a memorabilia, ephemera, whatever you want to put in there. So let's make some envelopes. And let me take a look at my notes to make sure I know exactly which size I need to make. Okay, so let me introduce you to the envelope punch board. This is our most popular punch board. We have several punch boards to make different things, but this one is for envelope making. Um, and so you can take your own papers um, and make custom envelopes for your handmade cards, for whatever you want to send. Um, and it's great for gifting, um, for, um, you know, for scrapbooking, for card making, whatever you want to use it for. So we're going to make an envelope that's um, five and a half by seven and a half. Um, and the reason why we're going to do that is because the envelope that you end up with is going to be about a quarter of an inch larger 
than the the card that you're putting inside or the item that you're putting inside. So the measurements on the board, which again, that's super handy to have the measurements right on the board, that reflects the size of the item you put inside the envelope, not the finished size of the card the, or envelope. The finished size of the envelope is a quarter of an inch larger than what you're seeing here. So in order to get it to fit in the six by eight uh, journal, I had to do a five and a half by seven and a half envelope. And that tells me here, it tells you what size to cut your paper to um, in order to make that size envelope. And it tells me here 10 and a half by 10 and a half. And then it also tells you where to put your measurement on the score line when you start making your envelope. So let me grab my paper that I am going to use to make my envelope. I've already cut it down to 10 and a half by 10 and a half. And this is the paper I'm using. And so now I'm ready to make my envelope. I'm going to scoot a couple of things out of the way so you can see. And with this envelope um, punch board comes a score and um, a scoring tool and a, a folding knife foam folder right inside the, the tool. That's really handy to have the storage there. Um, so this tells me to line my 10 and a half by 10 and a half paper up at four and a half on this score line. So I'm going to put this up against the guide here and slide it over until it's at four and a half inches right here. Then the first thing I'm going to do is punch. Then I'm going to take my score tool and line it right here against this guide. And there's a score line underneath that I'm just going to follow with my tool and create a score line. Then I'm going to turn it counterclockwise 90 degrees, line it up at the top, and then I'm going to find that score line that I just made. And that's going to line up with this little guide right here. So that's where I'm going to push this punch and then score again. And we're gonna repeat that process on all four sides. So line it up with the score line, punch, and then score. And if your paper's larger than the board, don't worry about it because you're gonna just fold it and it's gonna work just fine. So again, line that up. I'm sorry if my head is in the shot, I'm trying to make sure I get it right on that score line. And then score. And the cool thing with We Are Memory Keepers, I think, is they think of everything. Honestly, they totally do. So um, to create a beautiful rounded corner to fit, make this have a, real, a really nice finished look, there's a reverse punch up here. So we're just going to pop the top flap in and round that corner. Um, we don't really need to round any of the other ones because they're not going to show. All right. So now we're ready to put together this envelope and I'm going to just fold along that score line and then use my bone folder to crease that. So these are my side flaps. And then here's my bottom flap. And let me show you a little trick with this bottom flap. Um, so we've got a little bit of this corner sticking up and what I like to do is take a straight edge, a ruler with a straight edge and just put that right here at the point where those meet. Take my scoring tool, score a straight line and then I just take my scissors and I trim that off so that it's not sticking up. You could totally leave it if you want, just depends on what style envelope you like to make. Then I'm going to take my double-sided tape, put some right here on these side flaps right along the edge and do that and there's my envelope. How cool is that? And this makes several different sizes. Um, of, of envelopes from, I think it's about two by three, like kind of a gift card size, all the way up to larger six by eight envelopes, or I think even seven by something. So tons of options. Um, so this is going to be part of our book. I've already made a second one, so there will be two. This is also gonna be part of our book. So now we're ready to put the pages together and to bind them. And so we're gonna, um, put these in order how we want them to to be in the book with the cover facing down so that goes first and then let's see let me look at my notes to make sure then we're going to take two of the copy sheets that I trimmed previously and we're going to place those down next so that our, our score lines are matching right down the middle there then we're going to take the ivory paper from the paper pad and place that. And then next comes two more sheets of copy paper. Place 
those down. And then our first envelope. And it's going to go this direction with the, the flap pointing towards the right. Okay, so your fold is just going to go right there with all the other folds. Then we're going to do two more copy sheets. Oh, these like to stick together. Sorry about that. There we go. Okay. And then after that, we're going to do the pretty navy floral. We're going to do this one. This is going to go down. Then two more copy sheets. Are you getting the, the idea here? We're putting just some regular paper in between all of these, just for writing, for journaling. Uh, and then the second envelope. And it's going to go this way with the, the top flap pointing to the left. And then two more copy sheets. And then our last, this pretty peach paper is going to go in. And you're going to make sure that you keep your floral, this right here, facing this direction so that it's at the bottom. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to do the last one sheet. This is our loaner sheet. And the reason why it's alone is because that's going to be facing each other. So you actually will have two sheets right there once you bind this. Okay, so now we're ready to bind. So I'm going to go through and just make sure everything is stacked, lined up nicely, that the folds are lined up together. And I think it's probably easier to do that with it folded. Now you're going to notice that these, some of these pages are sticking out past the cover and we're going to take care of that later. So don't worry about that. We will make sure that that looks all nice and neat once we're done binding. All right, so we've got those folds lined up. Now we're going to introduce you to another amazing tool. This is our book binding guide. And you can use this for journals, for books, for planners, for mini albums. It's a fantastic tool. It comes with this um, punch guide, and then it comes with this pretty felt case that has um, wax thread in it. It has a full instruction booklet for um, saddle stitching, Japanese stitching, and Coptic stitching. It comes with a piercing tool, and then it comes with a couple of different types of needles based on, you know, for the different types of stitching that you want to do. So we're going to work with the straight needle, and we're going to work with saddle stitching. So this is the, the guide for saddle stitching. So what you're going to do is take your pages, Put, there's a, it's hard to see, but there's a, a crease right here, like a, a kind of a dent where the holes are. So that makes it easy for you to line up your fold in the tool. And we're gonna just push that flush up against this top guide here. And then, you know what? We actually need to do it um, half at a time. So we're gonna split up this book in half right at that first envelope. Okay, so that's your first group. Here's your second group. We'll start with this group and get that fold right there in the groove, line it up against the top. And then we're gonna place this guide on top, the punching guide, and screw these right in to hold it down. And this also is dented so that you can make sure that it's right in that fold, in that crease. Now, while it's in this tool, I like to take some binder clips and clip it together so that it will stay when I take it out. And I just kind of put them, you know, maybe an inch away from the spine. All right, now we're ready to pierce. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the, with the top hole, and then I'm going to count every third hole, and I'm going to punch. You can do more or less if you want to have more stitching in your spine or less stitching. Um, it's just really up to you. It depends on what, what you'd like to do. So I, But I recommend before you start punching holes to figure out exactly where you're going and, and where everything's going to fit on your page before you start punching holes. So there's hey, no top hole. Yeah. A question coming in. Um, about how many pages can you punch at once? So that's going to depend on how thick your paper is. So for this, this one, I've got, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven. I've got seven, but some of them are copy paper and some of them are the, um, you know, the cardstock that's thicker. So I would say probably um, four to five sheets of cardstock, depending on the weight of the cardstock. Um, and you probably could do 15 to 20 sheets of copy paper, depending again on, on the weight. Um, so that's a good question. So again, I'm just going one, two, three, and piercing that. I don't know if I completely got that last one. Let me just make sure I went all the way down. I did. Okay. One, two, three. One, two, three. And you can feel it go down through the paper and then to the other side. One, two, three. One, two, three. Now there are, um, there's, uh, again, the um, wax thread comes with it, but you could also use um, floss, like embroidery floss if you want. That would also be pretty. You can add some pretty colors. All right, so now I'm ready to take this section out. Let me screw these. And again, I've got those binder clips to kind of hold it tight so it stays in place. And now we're going to add these. Just make sure they're all lined up. Get that groove in and we'll go through the same process. Let's see where are we at time-wise. Okay, so I'm actually not gonna go through that same process um, just because that will take some extra time, but I wanna quick show you how to um, bind these together. So just pretend that this is the entire <laughs> book. Um, so I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is measure, I'm gonna take my thread, and I'm gonna measure one length plus probably three or four inches. Then I'm gonna fold this over and go back and add three or four inches, okay? So you've got extra on each end. We're just gonna trim this and grab, let's see, my straight needle, which is hopefully, here we go, under the paper trimmer. All right, so we're gonna thread this. And there's a nice wide eye to this needle, so it makes it easy to, to get it in there. All right, and then you're gonna give yourself a little, little slack there. And um, I'd like to start at the bottom, and you're gonna start by going this way. We're not gonna come up this way, we're gonna go this way. And, a, and then you're gonna pull it so you have that extra three or four inches and just hold it. And then we're gonna come up through the back. And this is, again, this is called saddle stitching. So it's, it's just like a basting stitch where you're just gonna go under, over, under, over on the way up. And, oops, that slid right through. And this is gonna just hold your pages together nice and secure. Um, so, so I, people lo who love book binding, you can also do this with wood covers, with chipboard covers, with leather covers. So there are a lot of options for making pretty covers when you're book binding as well. But in this case, I just wanted to use the cardstock. So once we reach the top, then to make sure that everything is nice and secure, we're gonna go back down but this time we're gonna do the opposite. So we're going to go up through this hole and cover that empty space right there. All right, and go down so that it's stitched from the top and the bottom through each hole. Um, and when I'm book mining, sometimes I just like to stick on a movie and just go out in my living room and bring my my pages with me and just sit and bind. And that's a lot of fun. All right. And then I'll show you how to tie it off at the bottom. And as you're going along, it's, it's important to make sure that you're checking that you don't have any, any slack or any extra thread so that your binding is nice and tight. Um, so it holds those pages together. All right, so I finished stitching, and then I'm gonna take this bottom thread here, give it a little tug and make sure that's nice and tight. And then we're just gonna tie these in a square knot. 
that is the easiest way to finish this off. And I like to kind of keep that knot right here near the hole, as close as I can get. So the square knot is just right over left, and then left over right. And then just tie it nice and tight and snip off the extra so you have maybe a quarter of an inch there and then you finish. Now when you've done the two different parts, um, obviously you'll have the two parts together, but you'll clip each part together. So this will be clipped, this will be clipped, and then you place them together and clip them all together. So I hope that makes sense. Once you've stitched these, they're going to be in two separate clipped bunches. Place them together, um, clip them together, and then I like to take my piercing tool and go through and make sure that the holes are lined up. So I go through each hole with the two separate groups and make sure that those are lined up perfectly so when I go to stitch, the holes are all lined up nice and perfectly. All right, and so here's what, let me show you what's cool about this. Pull these off. And now you've got your book together. And look how, let's see if we have, do we have an envelope? We do. Here's your envelope. See, that's just right in there with your pages. So you can store ephemera or memorabilia. And then you've got a pretty flap here that just kind of creates a little visual interest, something a little different in your book. So that's kind of fun. Um, so once we finish that, let me just go through and show you some of the ways that I've embellished this album. And then I will take questions if you have any, um, any more questions. Um, so I used stamps on this. Um, this is one of the stamps from the set. I've used, I, again, I just die cut a whole bunch of different pieces with those pretty dies and use them as accents. Here's some washi tape. This, again, is I just cut out some of the beautiful florals on one of the pages. This is called fussy cutting um, and that added that to the top. Um, and then some of these elements you can fold right over. This is just one of the little labels from the cut apart paper and I just scored it and fold it right over the page so you have a little flap that folds over. And then I added some washi tape to this uh, side. And then again, the little die cuts that you can create with the different papers and um, made a pretty flower um, little arrangement there. Um, and then one trick is you can extend, um, oh, let me show you really quickly with the paper pads, some of the wonderful page papers that are included that allow you to create your own embellishments. We already talked about this one with all the labels and, um, journaling spots and we talked about the the one that has the six by six um, titles then there's also this one that has borders so you've got everything you need right in that paper pad to create you know borders labels journaling spots embellishments titles um, so that's really handy so i used one of these um, borders and cut that and extended it across to the other page and and to work that crease right there you can either cut it or you can score it and just bend it right over that crease. And then washi tape is perfect for adding flaps. So I put a piece on the top and then a piece on the bottom, and then you can add extra journaling or details there. Again, I stamped um, this pretty tag. So these tags are in the um, class supplies um, and they just come as blank tags. And that allows you to create whatever you want on them, to stamp on them, to add die cuts, to add, uh, journaling to, uh, you could stick a little photo on there and it comes with some twine. Um, so that's really handy. So that allows you to get really creative. And then I use one of these cut aparts on top of that. And then here is a pretty um, title page. And then I, again, I made a, another um, envelope and just taped it on. And here's a little insert where you can add some journaling or a photo. Um, and then some more washi tape. And then I'd like to add little flaps inside. Once I've bound my, my journal, I can just washi tape a little flap inside. I like to get different sizes. Um, I like to have some elements extending over the top of my journals. Um, here's another little flap. I wanted to say thank you. And this was gonna be about some of the um, amazing heroes that I have noticed in our community who are working so hard on the front lines to um, keep things going and to take care of people in the healthcare industry. Um, so again, I, I stamped with some pretty flowers from the set on this tag, added washi tape to make a flap. Um, this was part of the, um, sorry, the um, borders. And then here's the first envelope. And again, photos, journaling, ephemera, more space to journal. You could add some photos here. In fact, I've got some photos. 
um, that I printed with my little mini printer. Um, and you can just peel and stick or you can use your four by six prints because this is a six by eight journal. So I'm just gonna add that there. And this says, be true to who you are. We ha I had a friend make me some masks with some of my favorite um, uh, fabric in my favorite patterns. Okay, so and then here you could take a photo. This is a photo of me working from home in my office. And I'm just gonna add it to the inside of this flap and just show you how that works. Um, that just sticks right in there. And then I would write about how I am working from home and how that's going and what the positives and the challenges are. Here's a photo of my daughter um, reading. She's been reading a lot of books, which is great, probably more than she normally would, um, even though it's hard to, to do distance learning from home. She's been a trooper and has been doing a great job. So I would write about that here. Um, so we can just keep going this particular tag I scored at the top so that you can lift it up and add some journaling or a photo again more stamping here's that cute little flap from the envelope so you get the idea of how you can um, just make this your own add your own embellishments and your own um, style to it I like interactive elements that you pull out and you have to get involved in um, when you're looking through your journal so that's pretty much it. Again, make it your own. Make sure you're documenting your experiences during this historic time, good or bad. I mean, whatever, whatever is, um, you know, whatever's going on, make, make sure it's authentic. It's your story because people down the road, your ancestors, or sorry, your descendants, your kids, your grandkids, your nieces, nephews, they're going to want to know um, what you were dealing with. So um, that's it. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to, to ask yes. away. I'm happy to answer. Allie? Yeah. Um, the first one is what type of thread is used for the book binding tool? Okay, good question. So it comes with waxed thread um, and that's what you use it with. That is the preferred type of thread for book binding, but you can use other twine or other floss um, as well. Perfect. And how do you get photos with the cute sticker back? <laughs> so um, there are a lot of um, printers out there that are small handheld printers that can connect via Bluetooth directly to your phone. So you can just print them right off of your phone um, and the, the, you buy the um, printing paper that fits into this little printer and it's got, you know, peel off and stick option. Um, so that's kind of handy. Or you can just print your four by six prints, you know, online, order them online, and then cut them down, you know, and add some double-sided tape on the back and stick them in too. Perfect. Thank you. Uh-huh. Any other questions? That's it? Hey, right. Allie, well, I think I they think were probably oh. all. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Hi, Ali. It's Rochelle with Michaels. I think Hi, there Rochelle. were a couple of questions about how you went back and um, trimmed up the sides of your of your book. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. So the way I did that is, let me grab, where's my, here we go. Okay. So the way you're going to do that is, and, and of course yours will have the cover on. So let me grab the cover so you can see how that's going to work. Your cover is going to be on and you're going to have some extending across. And there are two ways to do that. Get yourself a really good, sturdy, sharp pair of scissors, um, and you can just go through and trim. And it might take you a few tries to do that. Another way to do that, and I wanna make sure, hold on, I'm gonna see if I've got my um, crafting knife. Oh, I, I don't think I, I don't think I added it to my cart here. But you would take a craft knife, a sharp craft knife, and you would use, again, your straight, ruler a metal ruler and you would go along and let's say this is my craft knife i would just go down and and cut those off and it would take a few swipes at it but you can get them off so they're nice and straight oh so hopefully that makes sense any other questions see i'm okay. I think that covered a lot of the, of the questions, Allie. I really appreciate you. It sounds like everybody really enjoyed your class today and you made a beautiful book. Hopefully, I just wanna thank everybody for their time. I know everyone's time is precious these days and you know, hopefully you learned something new. Obviously, Michaels is here to keep you guys making 
and really hoped you enjoyed it and that um, you tag us with what you're making. Tag at Michaels, make it with Michaels, you know, so that way we can, can see what you guys are doing. And um, if you miss something throughout the class, we will be posting this. So you can check out michaels.com backslash classes. Um, and with that, Allie, unless you had any closing pieces, I just want to thank everybody so much and hope that you guys really enjoyed your time. Thank you so much. I'm so glad you joined me today. Thank you, everybody. Take care, stay healthy and safe.